Hi, I'm Natasha Ryan with Premier Risk Solutions, and this is our video series, Strong, Safe, and True, where we normally sit down with the leading experts in the security sector to talk about things that are relevant to today's climate, especially keeping companies and their employees safe. Today, we're sitting outside of that box, and we're sitting down with Dr. Gregory Jantz, whose entire life work is based on mental health. And we're specifically talking about going into the mind of active shooters. Here's what he had to say. When I think of active shooters, I think there's maybe three basic profiles. There's the person, number one, they have been traumatized. They feel revenge, betrayal, and they're gonna act out on it, okay? Number two, there are those that are actually psychotic, which just means they've broken from reality and they are acting in a non-reality. So that does happen. And then thirdly, I think about those that probably are under some psychopathic influence, such as um, they may be addiction oriented. A lot of times there is uh, alcohol or drugs in a person's system when they've done shooting, but not always. But uh, they're also the person that may be somewhat sociopathic. They just like don't have a sense of right or wrong and they're gonna act out. So those are three basic profiles. You know, for our younger kids, the traumatized one is the one we're really concerned about. When we see shootings aged 12, 17, in that range, uh, these a lot of times are kids who feel like they've been betrayed and they're gonna get revenge. And as far as like seeing someone that goes in a FedEx facility, mm -hmm. uh, an ex-employee, what is going through that person that person's mind and is there a timeline for when that need does it typically get worse the need for revenge or does it ease up if they if you can let it sit over time there's two ways to look at this there's the plotter they've been plotting for a while they had a sense of something happened and maybe they've been under chronic stress for a long time they have the access and means now to do something about it and they've been plotting for a while and they already many times they know the outcome they're gonna either take their life or they know their life's gonna be taken. So they've already planned that out. And then there's the one that's more impulsive. They are made the immediate decision. It's like they're on automatic pilot and they're going to do this. So we don't always know which it is at first, um, but there are some clues we can talk about. Let's talk about those okay, clues. What clues. are we gonna look for? Well, there are those that are obsessed with getting even. There's an obsession. Now, I think about obsession, they're thinking about it. Um, they're leaving us a trail of clues. Now, there are those that actually leave clues. They're leaving clues in social media. They're saying things to peers. They're saying things to family. Uh, you start to see, at times, uh, a pattern. And we look back and go, oh, I should have seen this. Um, so it's in retrospect, a lot of times we see this. Um, where you see a pattern of revenge, you see a pattern of destruction, you see a shift in their focus. Now they are, they're focused on things that are destructive, um, and you may see them um, turn on friends. They are in a mode that they are gonna go and do something dramatic. And unfortunately, by the way, you probably notice this, but particularly the school shootings, one school shooting oftentimes leads to the next one. And we have something called copycats. Mm -hmm. I want to talk about social media yeah. because having been in the news business for so many years, I agree there, there seem to always be warnings on social media yes. accounts. Do you think companies should mm -hmm. be building in viewing social media profiles as now part of their management style? Mm. Well, to know what a person is putting out in social media, I think is really important. So my answer to that is yes. I wanna know who is this person and who do they present to be in social media? What's their social media profile? And milling around the office, mm -hmm. what are some personality behavioral things that bosses might wanna hmm. take note of? I always look, is a person able to have successful workplace relationships? Okay. Or are they bringing in a theme of anger? They're always upset about something. They're always angry. Uh, you, it's like they're targeting those in supervision. They're targeting their bosses. They're targeting managers. When I say targeting, I mean verbally. 
So you can see this person is unhappy and their anger is now targeting other people verbally. Sometimes we'll see some passive aggressive behavior where they'll talk uh, about a person through other people and it's creating a lot of division in the workplace. So those are some of the things I want to be aware of. And in those moments, you know, you have someone that's frustrated. What is, what do you think that moment is where they finally snap? What, what provokes that snap? There is a snap and there is something where there's that, okay, if it's more of a psychotic situation where they have disconnected from reality, um, sometimes they will not even have memory recall of what they have done. That is truth. Now that's, that's a lesser number of them, but that is a possibility. So uh, a person can snap, there's a trigger point. There is something that's happened that is the tipping point that pushes them over the edge. Could be somebody said something, it could be they lost their job, it could be something has happened to them because they've been under this uh, chronic obsessive stress for a while and it's, it's peaking. Now all we need is that trigger point or that tipping point. So do you believe we can get in front of this? Mm. And if so, how? Well, um, as a person who's very interested in the, the psychology of this, mm -hmm. Uh, I think there are those, if you will, dropping of crumbs that if we look at and go, okay, there's something out of order. Because a lot of times what I hear is people say, you know what, I knew something was wrong. Or, yeah, now I see it all makes sense. So part of it is we tend to ignore or dismiss some of those clues. So I'm going to err on the side of safety. I'm going to say, okay, you see these patterns? Um, I'm gonna say it's time to speak up. Now, I'm not saying you can predict another person's behavior, but a lot of times there are warning, uh, some pretty clear warnings. Can you give me an example of a warning you've seen specifically when you, because you go on news outlets, you talk about active shooters a lot. Mm -hmm. um, you're the expert in the local market. So I want to kind of talk about things that you've seen specifically on social media. What's a red flag? A red flag is anything that says, I am going to get even. A person uh, may not say, I'm gonna go shoot somebody. Right. But you see a theme of revenge. So I look at, do they feel betrayal? Uh, are they speaking about any form of revenge? Um, or we're gonna get even, or I'm gonna get even, or something bad's gonna happen. Those are all pretty good clues. There is this, if you will, an emotional violence before the actual physical violence. Oftentimes, a shooter is going to go to the most vulnerable, which means the easiest. This is why all of us, you know, if you're out in public and you're alone, you need to be really aware. We talk about being aware of your 360 surrounding um, because a person becomes a victim when they're not aware. So one of the things we know is easy targets, lots of people, people that wouldn't uh, necessarily be able to fight back or defend themselves, they're not armed. Uh, this is why we're seeing uh, grocery stores, um, malls, where you have a mass opportunity to create the greatest harm. So it's the most vulnerable. And do you think as these, I've had this conversation with security experts in our industry, as pandemic restrictions loosen mm -hmm. and there's going to be more, you know, mass crowds, it's mm -hmm. been alluded to that we're going to see more of this. Would you agree with that? You know, I, I hope we are not going to see more of this. It seems like every day there's some kind of shooting. And I believe a mass shooting is really described when four or more people are involved. Well, if one's involved, that's too many. But I, I think the probability is we could see more of it. And of course, a big thank you to Dr. Jantz for coming on to our series, Strong, Safe, and True. Be sure to check out PremierRiskSolutions.com on our blog section because we have guests on a weekly basis and it's fun to be able to do this and educate. And of course, if you need any help with security services, PRS does executive protection work. We do security consulting, risk assessments. We do training like workplace violence mitigation and then traditional agents as well. So if you need any help, please feel free to contact me at natasha at premierrisksolutions.com. Thanks for watching.